Welcome back. There's some jobs ready for you. Hi YouTube, how you doing? Today I'm going to be going through the tarot cards in Phasmophobia. Now these are a cursed item that can be really, really helpful in certain circumstances, but only if you know how they work. And one of the big problems is that they're not well explained, and they're definitely not explained enough to understand the mechanics that they are impacting, because those mechanics just aren't mentioned a lot of the time. So we're going to go through them one by one. They are dead simple to understand, dead simple to remember. I'm going to go through each one, what they do specifically, and how they can be useful to you in your ghost hunting activities. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. The Tower Card. So let's talk about the tower card for a second. This forces an interaction and doubles all ghost activity for 20 seconds. Now this is really useful if you want to force some interactions for things like EMF readings or fingerprints or book writing or anything like that. Or if you're able to identify the ghost based on its specific behavior. The Wheel of Fortune card. So the Wheel of Fortune is very much a coin toss in regards to what you get when you draw it. The individual player who draws it either gains 25% sanity if it burns green or they lose 25% sanity if it burns red. Now this can only really be useful if you've run out of sanity pills and you happen upon the tarot cards or if you're trying to get the lower sanity objectives during your investigation. The Fool card. So the full card. The full card initially appears as another card and then it reveals itself as the full before burning. So drawing this card basically lets you know that nothing has happened and you've essentially wasted a card. It's also important to point out that during a ghost hunt, cursed or otherwise, all tarot cards that are drawn will be full cards. So don't go wasting your tarot cards whilst the ghost is pottering around after you. The Devil card. Now the Devil card, it triggers a ghost event near the player that's closest to the ghost. Now this can sometimes be really useful if you want to try and identify or discount ghosts based on their individual behavior. A good example of this is the Oni. Now if you get this Devil card and you get the air ball ghost event, meaning the little ball of mist follows you around and you hear a hiss noise in your headphones when it hits you, that means that it's probably not an Oni because they don't do that ghost event. So if that's one of the ghosts that's still on your list, you can scratch them off. The Death Card. Not quite as fatal as it sounds, the Death Card actually just initiates a cursed hunt. It doesn't automatically kill you or anything like that. And to understand more information about cursed hunts, there will be another video on my channel very shortly and another short going up just to explain what they are, why they're special, and what makes them different from regular hunts. The Hermit Card. The Hermit card teleports the ghost back to its original room, or the room it's chosen to be its ghost room at that point in time, and it traps it there for one minute. This can be really useful if you just want to confirm the ghost room, or you have ghost proximity objectives like smudging nearing the ghost, or preventing the ghost from hunting with a crucifix, because if your sanity is low enough when that 60 seconds is up, there's a good chance it's going to come after you for locking it in a room for 60 seconds. The Sun card. The Sun card is nice and easy. Whoever draws it, their sanity is now at 100%. The Moon card. The Moon card is nice and easy. Whoever draws it, their sanity is now 0% instantly. This is actually a really useful card if you are going for the low sanity objectives in your investigation. But otherwise, it is a surefire way to trigger a hunt almost immediately. The High Priestess card. One of the rarer tarot cards to draw, the High Priestess card randomly selects a player that's died and brings them back to life. Or if, like myself, you play solo, it gives you an extra life, meaning that if you are killed during your investigation, you are then revived. For multiplayer, it's worth noting that a revived player can't be killed again during the same ghost hunt, cursed or otherwise. The Hanged Man card. One of the really rare cards to draw is the Hanged Man card, and for good reason. It instantaneously kills the player. That's it. That's all it does. 
The only way you can reverse this is if you've already drawn a High Priestess card, which is the second rarest card in the game. So that is the tarot cards explained. Now they can be really useful during your investigation and they can be useful in getting your additional objectives really, really quickly. And now you understand the mechanics behind them, hopefully this will help you in your future ghost investigations. I hope this video has helped you. If you like, well, you know how YouTube works by now. I don't need to explain it. So stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much.